Hello and welcome to Lyranara. More and more doctors from all around the world who work in intensive care units and uh, in critical care of COVID-19 patients report very strange symptoms that normally are not associated with pneumonia or with a viral infection such as COVID-19. Therefore, we have to ask ourselves, could it be that certain factors exacerbate the symptoms and conditions of COVID-19? If so, what are those possible factors? Let's discuss. Before we do that, though, if you enjoy this type of content where we look at holistic health, like, share and subscribe, support our work and also do not forget to hit the notifications button so you don't miss out on the weekly content that appears here. Without further ado then, let's pull in the dragnet and look at all of the possible factors that affect those COVID-19 patients and that might be the cause for the strange symptoms the doctors are observing. What is interesting about the corona patients in critical care is that doctors like the New York City ICU emergency physician Cameron Kyle Sidel have noticed that they are not suffering from pneumonia, but rather from an inability to absorb or carry oxygen in the blood. They are not dying from pneumonia, but from oxygen starvation. Dr. Kyle Sidel said the following, quote, COVID-19 lung disease as far as I can see, is not a pneumonia and should not be treated as one. Rather, it is resembling to, to a high altitude sickness. Is it uh, as if tens of thousands of my fellow New Yorkers are on a plane at 30,000 feet altitude and the cabin pressure is slowly being let out? These patients are slowly being starved of oxygen." End quote. In other words, this is not a classic scenario of viral respiratory condition. How exactly then can all these patients be starved of oxygen when their lungs are technically working just fine? And in order to answer this question, we need to look at how our body gets oxygenated. When it is functioning normally, one molecule of hemoglobin binds with four molecules of oxygen and forms oxyhemoglobin. This binding is only achieved because of something called partial pressure, which means the concentration of oxygen in the lungs tissues is higher than the concentration of oxygen on the hemoglobin molecule. Roughly stated, of course, uh, and th this is simplified somewhat. So the oxygen leaps to the hemoglobin in order to equalize the partial pressure across the chasm. Hemoglobin relies on something called a heme group, which is a complex molecule with iron at its center. This is surrounded by a porphyrin ring, which is a cluster of unique structures made of oxygen, carbon and hydrogen that has a special affinity for oxygen atoms. The ability of oxygen to leap onto this molecule in the lungs depends entirely on the structure, which also implies the ionic charges of these complex molecules. And this heme group relies on the presence of histidine, a special protein reducing the carbon monoxide affinity of the heme. Thus, the histidine presence is critical for allowing the heme group to preferentially bind with oxygen. And the same hemoglobin molecule must carry both CO2 and oxygen, but at different times. And it must attract and then release those molecules at opposite times in order to rid the body of CO2 and nourish the body with oxygen. In order for each hemoglobin molecule, depicted here as a train carriage in the picture on the right, to transport and release oxygen to the cells, the following conditions must be achieved. You need a 21% oxygen concentration in the lungs. This is always possible due to the 21% oxygen in the air, so the lungs are always saturated with oxygen if they are working properly. 
In the lungs also we need a pH value of 7.45. This is unfortunately not possible under prolonged stress with the resulting adrenaline depletion and lactic acid overproduction. Only four oxygen molecules can be bound to one molecule of hemoglobin. If you breathe faster, so if you hyperventilate, or you add an oxygen tube to your nose or directly into the lungs as you do with a ventilator, you will not get more oxygen to the cells. To release the oxygen to the cells, we need also a pH value of 7.35 and enough carbon dioxide that means between 35 mmHg and 40 mmHg, so about 6.5% of carbon dioxide in the blood, and this is necessary to open up the capillaries and blood vessels. And if these conditions do not happen concomitantly, there will be no correct oxygenation at the cellular level. And this is when hypoxia occurs. And this is what the doctors are observing in the COVID-19 patients. Cells which do not receive enough oxygen can mutate, so it can lead to cancer. They degenerate or they die, also known as cellular apoptosis. Where the cellular environment is not aerobic enough, bacteria, parasites and pathogens, such as the SARS-CoV-2 virus, because most of the microorganisms are anaerobic, they find their ideal environment, their nest, so to speak, and you become susceptible to these infections. So, to sum it up, essential to transport and release the oxygen to cells is a carbon dioxide concentration of 6.5% in the blood and not to increase the oxygen pressure in the lungs. This can be achieved through correct breathing, for example, with a long exhalation of 40 to 60 seconds. Uh, some recommended techniques here are the Boteco technique or the Wim Hof method. We've done a video specifically on correct breathing and breathing exercises. Uh, just search our channel for it. Carbon dioxide has two essential functions in our body. CO2 keeps the blood pH at a constant level of uh, 7.35 to 7.45 and it is also the best vasodilator in the body and it keeps the over 65,000 miles of capillaries um, opened at an ideal state and enables them thereby and the whole body to have a correct microcirculation. And the capillaries reach all organs and tissues in the body and are the real highways of oxygen that are transported to the cells. Notice also that the capillaries are not served by the heart, which due to its 150 grams of weight has the power to circulate the blood only in the arteries and arterioles. In the capillaries, the blood flow is self-driven by a vortex generated in a left heart ventricle and by the electrical charges in the red blood cells, which are positively charged, and the capillary walls, which are negatively charged. And you can see this also in the pictures on the right. When the carbon dioxide partial pressure uh, drops below 30 mmHg or below 6.5 in the blood, the cells are starved of nutrients and oxygen, both transported of course by the blood, and therefore the cells become toxic due to the metabolic waste which cannot be excreted. And cellular degeneration as well as toxicity are the results thereof. Microcirculation through capillaries is actually a very delicate electromagnetic system that is susceptible to stress, panic, fear, existential worries and other disturbances such as EMF, so electromagnetic fields. And I'm sure you have heard already people uh, talking about the connection or the possible connection between 5G radiation and the symptoms that we're seeing in COVID-19 patients. So is this only a conspiracy theory or can we really find some uh, relevant links there? Can 5G disturb your blood circulation or microwave um, 
fields in general. The 5G 60 GHz electromagnetic radiation alters the porosity of cellular membranes and displaces uh, molecules or soluble gases such as carbon dioxide. It is well documented that 5G radiation causes so-called voltage-gated ion channels or VGICs, specifically with calcium ions, so-called VGCCs. And this causes cellular toxicity due to too much calcium entering the cell walls and poisoning the cells. And you can see how this uh, takes place in the graph uh, on the top right here. Research published in Environmental Research reveals that 5G exposure not only alters cell permeability, so the porosity of the cells, but also releases peroxynitrite in the body. And these are inflammation producing molecules that ravage other healthy compounds that circulate in the blood. Interestingly enough, coronavirus patients are being observed with very unusual symptoms such as heart disease, acute liver injury, acute kidney injury, endocrine problems, blood sugar control issues, coagulation issues, blood clots, ongoing gastrointestinal issues such as diarrhea, skin manifestations, neurologic damages, testicular damages, oxidative stress, a loss of taste and smell, hearing problems, nausea, confusion, muscle pain and even brain damage. And if we compare those symptoms to the very well documented and known symptoms of microwave illness here um, in the table on the bottom right, we can see that many of the observed symptoms in COVID-19 patients are the same as those of microwave illness. Does that mean that this only uh, is observed and is caused by microwave radiation? Well, not necessarily, but microwave radiation could play a role in it. It has been known that 5G radiation and its effects on the cells of the body can lead to such symptoms as described here, as well as to flu-like symptoms. The question then is, are we dealing with a phenomenon where 5G radiation exposure occupies the hemoglobin molecule with other elements that alter its structure and therefore its function, inhibiting thereby its ability to bind with oxygen? Because when you hit the oxygen molecules with 60 GHz millimeter waves, it affects the orbital properties of the electrons of the oxygen molecules. The 60 GHz range is known as the oxygen absorption band. At 60 GHz, 98% of electromagnetic energy is absorbed by oxygen, as you can see here also in the graph on the top right. So when 5G reaches the frequency band of 60 GHz, the ability of a person's blood hemoglobin to bind with oxygen is significantly hindered. Does that mean that 5G causes this and not COVID-19? No, it does not necessarily mean that, but it is possible that the patients are already weakened by this 5G uh, and microwave radiation that they are receiving as well as other factors. And this makes them more susceptible to COVID-19 and exacerbates the symptoms and leads therefore more likely to serious conditions and to all of the strange symptoms that we are seeing. So let's sum up some of the factors which together weaken you nowadays and leave you vulnerable to illness. We have stress, panic, fears and existential worries which all deplete your adrenaline and lead to uh, your body on a fermentative pathway. Also, we've seen that if the CO2, the carbon dioxide concentration in your blood is below 6.5, the microcirculation is very difficult due to the constricted capillaries and the pH in the blood, lungs, organs and all tissues in your body, which then slides below 7 uh, act and activates the killer cells known as exosomes, is a problem as well. Another problem 
is that we have this microwave radiation. The 5G radiation at 60 gigahertz um, affects all electromagnetic processes in our body and therefore sickness can progress faster and we are more susceptible to pathogens and all of that with more fatal consequences. And all of these factors impact our health synergistically. And all of this together can be seen therefore as the dragnet uh, we live in today. So with all that being said, I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. If you did so, please support our work by liking, sharing and subscribing and also hit the notifications button. You can also find this video on our blog at lyranara.info. I'm going to post the link in the description box below for you. And until next time, stay healthy.